Before we get started, always like to start by honoring our pastor, Pastor Obed Martinez, and just I'm so thankful that he believes in us um, as women flourishing and just going out and being a part of the, the body of Christ and growing in our gifts and talents and, and allows us to have this amazing time. So come on, let's just thank God for an amazing lead pastor. And also, I uh, want to acknowledge our writing team. want to thank Pastor Billy for being a part of our um, writing team. And also um, Pastor Ashley as well. And also Melinda Yerudia right here. Melinda as well. And um, Jessica for um, handling all the design and all the things that go behind the scenes. So it's just great. We're looking forward to it. So are you ready to get into the word today? Awesome. All right, well, we start by joining in in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. And it says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that through these 10 weeks, God, we believe, God, that you're going to be growing fruit in our lives. God, we give full access to you, Father. And we thank you that you will grow us through this study. God, we'll look back and we will say, man, we were fruitful and we are multiplying. Multiply our lives, our marriages, our families. And God, we give you all the praise. We welcome you into each and every one of our weeks and in our personal study time. And we give you all the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, in preparing for this study, you know, our last one was Trailblazers. Those of you girls who got to join in with us last time, it was awesome. And, um, you know, during, um, as we were wrapping up the end of Trailblazers, starting to go, okay, what's next? God, where are you leading our women from here? And we really felt like God was just speaking to us in Genesis. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, God said, be fruitful and multiply. You know, God wants our lives to increase. You know, he wants your marriages to increase. He wants your relationships to increase. He wants our jobs, our finances to increase. God is constantly wanting us to grow to even more. John 10.10, we're reminded what Jesus said when he said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. That God wants us, us to live a fruitful, abundant life. And we see that in this study, that we're going to be focusing on living a fruitful life, that everywhere we turn, that we can say we are fruitful. John 15, 16 says, I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. This is not just our neighbor. This is not just the pastor. This is not just, you know, the sister Susie. No, it's saying that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should what? Remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give to you. You know, when our lives are lined up with God's word, which is God's will, we find that we're able to become fruitful. You know, any time that you've seen that, man, you've hit a dry spell in your life, or you can look around and you're like, okay, my life isn't really growing in these areas. This is where we go, well, maybe my life isn't really fruitful here. And you know, in, in, in the natural, we know that, that fruit is comes in seasons and you know it comes in seasons and we know that that's true in our lives with Christ that that in our lives with Christ it comes with steps it comes with the seasons but it also comes with us remaining in him so if you abide in me and I'm abiding in you then we will have fruit and not just fruit not just for the moment but fruit that will last anyone trying to have fruit that will last I mean try to keep fresh fruit in your cabinet for a while it will not last but how many of you know that with Christ, our fruit will last? Psalm 37, 4 says, delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. You know, I love this. He's like, and when your fruit is lasting and you're abiding in me, I'm going to give you whatever you ask. And he's saying, so as long as you delight in me, I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. Because how many of you know that it's God that places the desires in our hearts in the first place? You know, when we're lined up with him, then we find that we want his will in our lives. When we start to go a little other places and we start to stray away from spending time with him or coming to church or small group, don't you find that your desires change? 
and then all of a sudden you want things that maybe are not as meaningful in the long run, but, but when we find ourselves back in line with him, it's almost like he reminds us, hey, this is, this is something I've placed in your heart. And he gives us the desire for it, which I think is amazing. That it's not like he just wants it for us. We actually want it. Have you ever wanted something for your kids, but they don't really want it? You know, it's like he helps to place the desire in our heart so that we can want it. I think that's so just amazing how he does that. Yet consider the equation. He said, be fruitful and multiply. He didn't say multiply and then be fruitful. And I think this is where the more fruit we're bearing, the more we can multiply, the more we can see others being affected by God that's at work in our lives, the more that we'll see our family members being affected, our coworkers being saved, those who are reaching out and longing for, man, I just need a little bit more love or more joy. We're like, I've got some. I can share it with you. We can multiply. Because Jesus, he lived a fruitful life. Jesus' life was fruitful. Everywhere he went, he had something that he could give. Think about it. When somebody came and said, I, I need to be healed, he didn't say, sorry, tapped out today. He was like, okay, got it for you. Hey, you know, I need some faith, the disciples said. Sure, I'll help build your faith. Anytime they were in need, Jesus had it available for them. And look at the multiplication in the disciples. Look what, look what um, Peter and John and, and those when they went to the temple, now in Acts, and they saw people by the, by the temple side, and they were begging. And what did they say? Oh, heal me, heal me. I need, I need some money. I need some food. And what did he say? I don't have that. I don't have any money for you. But what do I have? I, what I have, I will give unto you. And that very hour, they reached out their hand, and he began to walk. So look at the multiplication of the life through Christ that now the disciples begin to walk in that same anointing. And so that is what we're seeing here. The multiplication, be fruitful and multiply so that it flows through our lives. We're tapped into the vine. We're saying, God, be fruitful in my life so that I can reach out and be fruitful to others because God is a God of steps. And so th we're going to go through today some of the steps to being fruitful because in your books, you'll find that every day when you get a chance to study on your own, there's five days that we've lined out for you. And so we're going to kind of touch on those five days so when you study them, you'll have an opportunity to know what is it that I'm really looking at? What am I really studying here? And so, number one, we see that we are to be fruit-bearing. You know, because every fruit still goes through the same process of having to grow from the seed out into becoming the fruit. So it's still the life of a fruit. And so I thought it would be really neat to kind of walk us through a story that Jesus went through at the women of the well. And in John chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, it says, he, meaning Jesus, left Judea and departed again to Galilee, but he needed to go through Samaria. Isn't it interesting that Jesus could have went straight from Judea to Galilee, but it's like he said, no, I need to go through Samaria. Have you ever felt like God was taking you somewhere or you needed to do something, but that you almost knew, but man, God, I feel like I'm supposed to stop here first. Not really sure why. Man, I feel like the Holy Spirit's asking me to reach out to a friend that I've not seen in a while, or I need to make a phone call. And we don't really understand why, and then all of a sudden, when we see the end result, we realize why it was in the first place. Jesus said, I'm going to go to the other side, but I'm going to stop here in Samaria first. He decided, there must be somebody that I can reach out to. There's some fruit that, that, can, be, that can bear in this area. And so he went. And how many of you know that fruit has a lifespan? I mean, like I said, I mean, I wish that I could go to the grocery store. Because how many of you know when you have kids, like, it just goes. And their lunches, morning, night, it's just gone. And um, I wish that, like, I could buy this, like, this week, and it would last till the, a month or two. Don't you wish that that would just be awesome? But how many of you know that fruit has a lifespan? And, you know, the first one that I would say is that there's the unripened fruit. You know, there's the green bananas. Have you ever tried to give your, your child a green banana? Now, I'm, I kind of lean on the green side, so I kind of like that better than the brown side. But that's, that's more like it's the unripened. It's more like there's potential there, but it's not fully developed. And I think as we're going through this study, it's asking ourselves each day, where am I at in my fruit-bearing process? Is there potential there? It's not ripened yet. Maybe it's not fully developed. And the next one we see is that there's, then there's the low-hanging fruit. 
And the low hanging fruit is when you can walk up to a, a tree and just pick the apple right off. Like it's ready and waiting to be picked. Are there people in our lives that our fruit is so ready and willing, it's ready to be picked. It's ready for others to come and just ask me, you need, you need love today, you need joy, you need peace. I've got some that I can offer to you. And I think the third thing is when the fruit is already off the vine. How many of you know in that stage, then your, your fruit only has a, a short time where it can be ready to go? And if we don't use it at that time, what happens to it? It becomes rotten. And, um, you know, I also brought some uh, other fresh fruit that's in my house today. Anyone want um, an orange? These are cuties. No takers today? Cuties? <laughs> um, grapes? They could be raisins soon, you know. But how many of you know nobody really wants to eat these? I don't know why, but they're just not very appetizing. You know, and what it is is sometimes we're trying to offer this kind of fruit for people. You know, here, take of my peace, but I don't really have any peace today. Here, take of my faith. It's a, it's a little withered, but I'll, I'll give you what I've got. And then they're kind of looking at you like, okay, you know. And, and, and have you ever felt like, like somebody tried to share something with you, but they weren't, their fruit was either underdeveloped or it was overdeveloped? Like it was just, it's been rotten. It's just been like we're almost trying to hold on to the miracle of yesterday. You know, if I could just have the revelation of what I had, you know, five years ago, we can't, we can't lead today the way we led yesterday, you know. We can't lead our families today because we grow, our lives grow, God's growing us. And so this is, these are kind of just some of the fruit that we could see as we go through these 10 weeks. Number two, the next step is cultivating. And let's go back to the story in John, John chapter 4, verses 4, I mean, verses 6 and 7. And it says, now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. And a woman of Samaria came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Isn't it interesting that Jesus went and sat right where the women would, would come, right where she would be. It's almost like he just said, I'm going to put myself in your environment. You know, and I'm just going to wait. And then she had to be the one to say, I'm going to lean in, and I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of that environment. You know, a fruit, it, it takes a lot, has a lot to do with environment. They say that the best oranges grow in Florida because the environment there is the best. I think we have to ask ourselves, is the environment that I'm in, is it the best environment for me to be fruitful? What do I need to do as I'm going through these 10 weeks? What are the things that I need to change in my environment? Am I taking, am I setting aside a time and a place and an environment for my fruit to grow? Am I setting aside time where I can say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. Holy Spirit, refine me. You know, challenge me. Grow my life. John 15, 4 and 5 says, abide in me and I in you. And as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it is abiding in the vine, neither can you. So we can't expect to have all this juicy fruit available for everybody if we're not leaning back in and abiding in the vine and saying, God, I need more of you. I need you to cultivate my life. I need you to grow me. Man, this is an area I want to extend. I want to grow in my faith. I want to grow in my love. I want to grow in my joy. It's by saying, God, grow me. God, multiply me. Take me further. You may not be able to change your environment, but we can change the atmosphere. And, you know, there's times when, hey, maybe you're like, you know, my, my environment is a loud house with lots and lots and lots of children. Well, then find the bathroom, get, get a moment where you get in there and say, I just need five minutes. I'm just going to have a moment to myself. Or if you're at work and it's just really busy and you're like, man, I'm getting sucked into this environment. I'm getting sucked into what's going on around me. I'm getting sucked into negativity. Or then we've got to change. We can change the atmosphere. We can say, man, you know, excuse me for a moment. I need to take a break. Walk outside. Take a moment. Pray call a friend, be encouraged, do what we need to do so we can come back in and change and, and, and adjust the atmosphere. So don't allow the environment to change us. 
allow God's presence to change the environment. Amen? The third step that we see is pruning. How many of you like pruning? It is the worst, right? It's like, but I thought my tree was growing, you know? Like, why are you cutting back my branches, you know? It's almost like, you know, looking at this and going, okay, there's, this one is good, this one little grape, but these ones are really sad and dying. And, you know, it's almost like we're willing to hold on to the one or two areas that are good, and what happens is the rest of that part of our life is dying. And so we've got to allow sometimes God to cut some things back, cut some things off, some relationships off. Maybe it's some, maybe it's some people that we just can't spend as much time around. And whatever it is, and we've got to say, God, I got to cut, maybe it's got, I got to cut back on social media. Maybe it's I got to cut back on what kind of TV shows I'm watching. Maybe it's I got to cut back on some of the conversations I'm in. What's the pruning that God has for your life today? And you know, when going back to the woman in John chapter 4, it says, Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, can ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And Jesus answered, and he said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that saying is to you, Give me a drink. Then you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. And she said, but sir, you have nothing to draw with. The well's too deep. And Jesus answered, and he said to her, Jesus answered, and he said to her, whoever drinks of this water will never thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never thirst. For the water that I give him will become a fountain of living water springing up into the everlasting life. You know, Jesus was pruning her belief system. Have you ever found that, you know, what worked for before or what you believed growing up, maybe that was good for that moment, but I wonder if God is challenging us for where we're at today. You know, there's times when he kind of rocks our world, right? There's times when you're like, but I thought, I thought this of this person and then you get to know them, and you're like, wow, that is nothing like the impression that I thought. They're absolutely amazing people. And what happens is almost like God has to prune away those thoughts, those insecurities, those uh, selfish desires, those things that, that we want just for us. And he's saying, that's great. Don't worry. I'm going to work it all out for you. But I want you also to lean in and, and be a blessing to others because Jesus lived a life that he was constantly thinking about other people. And I wonder if, if that's some of that pruning. That some of that pruning is, it's not always about us. At the end of the day, it's not always about us. In the big spectrum of things, it's about just saying, God, teach me to see people the way you see them. Teach me to have the compassion that you do. And I wonder, you know, as we go through this study, what are the areas that God is saying, I want to prune back some areas. Because if there's a branch that's not producing, it's taking all of the energy from the rest. Have you ever felt like all of my energy is going one direction and I'm exhausted over here? But yet it's because we're putting our energy in the wrong place. Put your energy into people that want to be around you. Put your energy into people that are leaning out and they're saying, man, I would love to have time with you. I'd love to have coffee with you. Don't put your energy in the people that are running away from you. Does that make sense? Like, like reach out and have love and have compassion and go, yes. But, in the, but as far as your energy level and who you're developing and who you're building life with, build life with people that want to build life with you, that want to grow with you. John 15, 2 says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every, bra every, every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it would bear what? More fruit. Cutting back does not mean cutting off. It just means making room for more. So when we're cutting back, just know that subtraction always comes before multiplication. Number four is maturing. Maturing, John 4, 15. So the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst. And so she, he said, Okay, well, go call your husband and come here. And the woman answered and said, But I have no husband. And Jesus said, You're right, 
you don't. He said, you have no husband. You actually have had five, and the one you're with right now is not your husband. You know, this is where we have to go. Maturing is allowing God to see all the way into our lives. Jesus saw all the way into her heart beyond what he probably, she probably would have wanted him to. Maturity says, God, I'm going to be transparent before you. I'm going to say, God, I'm, my life is an open book. There's nothing truly that you don't know about me. So maturing says, God, I want you to develop those areas that might still be undeveloped in my life. And she probably was, and I love her, the end of her thing when she said, wow, well, I perceive that you're a prophet. That's some wisdom right there, right? Yeah. He's like, wow, I think you're a prophet. Yeah, probably so. But, you know, the maturity was saying, you know, you've, you've tried and you've looked for love in other places. You've looked for love from all these men, and you've looked for love over here, but I want to show you a different kind of love. I want to show you my love. I want to show you a love that, that will never run dry. I want to show you, come drink from the well of my living water, that when it's poured out into your life, you won't have to look for satisfaction in others. You'll, that'll be a, a bonus. It'll be an and, an add-on, some icing on the cake but it won't be what we're looking for because there will already be that acknowledgement of knowing, God, no, I know that you're pleased with me. I know that you love me just as I am, just as I am, God, you love you. Do you know that God loves you today just as you are? He loves us just as, our, as we are. He loves us in our frailties. He loves us in our imperfections, praise the Lord. He loves us just as we are. And he's saying, I want to show you a different kind of love. And number five is the multi multiplication or multiply. John chapter four. So the woman left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said to the men, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? And so they went out of the city and they looked for him. Isn't it amazing that one conversation with a woman changed her life? I wonder how many conversations that we have with others that could be life-changing moments. And I believe that through this study, through these 10 weeks, let us lean in and be a little bit more aware of who God's placing in front of us. That no matter if we're serving and, and doing a, a, a service to somebody or we're helping somewhere, no matter what it is, but that we lean in and say, God, there must be a reason that you've designed for me to be here at this moment. There was a, a reason that Jesus knew, I've got to go through Samaria. He went through Samaria to reach this woman. And I wonder how many times God interrupts our schedule, even though we don't want him to. It was an inconvenience for him to go all the way around to a different city. But I wonder if we'll allow God, God, you can interrupt my schedule so that your fruit can be developed in my life so that others will see and gain and multiply. And you know, Proverbs 11.30 says, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. May God multiply us as our fruit bearing grows through these 10 weeks. And you know, this, this first week that we dive into will be love. And you know, as we dive into love, 1 Corinthians 16.14 says, let all that you do be done with love. And you know, when you think about love, do you realize that love is attached to all of the fruit? I mean, how can we have joy if we really don't have love? How can we have long-suffering without having love? How can we be patient with people if we don't allow God to fill our hearts with love for them? And so as we lean into this first week of love, realize that love is attached to all of them. You know, 1 Corinthians tells us that without, we can do all these things. We can prophesy and move mountains and we can help people out, but without love, we're nothing. We're nothing. And so I'm, I'm so excited as we kick off this week on love. John 13, 35 says, by this will all men know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. You know, that's a fruit that others will be able to recognize in your life. Man, you're, how do you love that person? How do you honor that person? How do you love them when they're unlovable, when they're not loving you? How do you reach back and, and reach out to them and serve them and care for them when they could 
care less about you because there's a fruit that's bearing in your life, and it's the fruit of love. So very excited as we lean in on this, and I want to give everybody an opportunity if you haven't um, already um, received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior as we go through these 10 weeks. Maybe you're hearing about this study on the fruit of the Spirit, and you're like, but I've never received Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. We want to give you an opportunity to do so. So if, this, if that's you today, or if you're watching online and you're saying, man, I've, I really want to receive Jesus today, let this be a fresh moment, a new start in my life. So if that's you, would you raise your hand? We just want to lead you in a simple prayer. and You don't have to stand up or move around or anything. Amen. Thank you. We'll, we'll include you in the prayer. Anybody else that wants to? Okay, great. And online, we'd love for you to join us as well. So let's just, let's just pray this prayer. Just repeat the prayer after us, okay? Dear Jesus, I recognize that I'm in need of you. I'm in need of a Savior. Thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for saving me. I invite you, come into my heart. Be my personal Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. From this day forward, I follow you as my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed the word this morning. Wanted to give you an idea of what to expect, what to, what to lean in on. And, and as we look at those steps, asking ourselves each week, God, how am I bearing fruit? God, how am I cultivating it? What kind of environment? God, how am I maturing and pruning? And how am I multiplying it? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for today, girls. Thank you for joining us. Welcome back, Jess.